Hello and welcome to The Healer's Nest. My name is Sarah Elizabeth and it is an honor and privilege to be in this time and space with you. I cannot wait to share with you the number one thing that you can start practicing and applying and using not only in your upcoming ceremony, regardless of what that looks like, but in your whole entire life. Before we get started, let's bring awareness into the body, into the container. Let's take a deep breath in. You can keep your eyes open or closed. And then exhaling out, pushing out any worries or cares or any inflictions from today. Let's take a deep breath in. And let's take an exhale out. Inhale, getting out of the mind and into the body. Deep breath in. And then exhale out. Returning to the rise and fall of your body, of your breath. And let's just bring awareness into what is true for you right now. And with your breath, can you simply hold it as it is? Without judgment, without identifying it, whether it feels good or not, can you just be present with it? with the breath, with the breath, and not the mind, just the breath. And sometimes to get out of the mind, we have to take a deep breath in, and then exhale out. And allow that breath to take us to that perfection of what is inside. Let's show some gratitude. Gratitude towards our resources, thankful for each other, thankful for technology, thankful for all that is and will ever be, thankful for wisdom, and most of all, thankfulness and gratefulness for your willingness. I bow down to your commitment and your willingness to walk this path and your bravery and your courageousness to heal and to expand and to evolve and to create. Let's take a deep breath in. And when you are open, uh, ready, open your eyes and exhale out. I want to ask you a question. And this question requires 100% of your honesty. You have to be really honest and brutal with yourself so you can bring healing, true healing to yourself. What do you think about yourself? What do you think about your mom? What do you think about your dad? What do you think about your spouse? When you think about your bank account, your finances, your partner, your friends, when you think about the world today, what do you think about the experiences you've had? And are those thoughts 
creating residence, meaning that it's creating what you desire for yourself? Or is it creating dissonance, meaning it's not creating beautiful things in your life? It feels depressing, it feels hopeless, it feels like there's, you know, the, the scratches on the chalk, uh, chalkboard, but it's within your body. That's dissonance. The number one thing that you can start working on today, and it's going to radically shift your whole entire life if you're committed to doing it, and it's going to radically support you during our time together, is your mindset. Your mindset is a storehouse of all of your thoughts that you are thinking. And what you think about comes about. The thoughts that you think are things. Therefore, it creates the reality that you're currently living about and probably complaining about. And that's okay. We don't know until it's brought into our awareness and what makes you different is that you are doing the work and taking the time to know your blind spots. 99.9% .9 of the time when it comes to healing, it's really about the mindset that we're currently in. And especially when we start exploring plant medicine. Because when we sit in ceremony together, I can't fix your mindset. All I can do is make sure that you're going to be safe, but that's pretty much it. And the reason why I can't fix your mindset, it's because it's not my responsibility. It's yours. So I really invite you to pay attention to the thoughts that you're thinking and how they are shaping your reality and how they are making you feel in your body. Is it loving, supporting, nurturing thoughts or is it destructive? judgy, non-helpful, non-supportive thinking, really, thoughts. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about, you know, how the mindset is formed. And this is based off the Course of Miracles that I've studied. And this is also based on my experiences, um, especially when I got sick. If you don't know about the time that I got sick, um, first off, that wasn't fun. <laughs> but it was my mindset that really pulled me through, especially those really dark moments, right? So there is the whole mind there's, there's a whole mind. However, they do operate on two different frequencies. The first frequency is the Christ consciousness, infinite intelligence, the universe, plant consciousness, Sophia Christ consciousness. Um, it only has one supportive mind. And within that mind, they only think supporting, loving, creative, abundant, prosperity, healing thoughts. The way that Christ thinks of him or herself is the same way that he or she thinks of you. 
and they are asking you to think the same way as they think about you because both of you share the same mind. You are a creation of love and love pours forth through you every single day but we're unaware of that because we are disconnected from that Christ consciousness mind and we're connected to what is called an ego mind. The ego mind in Greek, the definition is separation from source. The ego mind is separation from source. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you something that I wish someone would have told me a long time ago. The ego mind is not this big bad bear or big bad wolf that's out to keep you small and limited and scared and all those things. The ego mind, it does serve a purpose. However, when we are unconscious of this information, the ego mind takes over and it runs the show. So what does that look like? It looks like judgment. It looks like fear. It looks like um, non-creative thoughts. It looks like um, damnation, okay? And when we start thinking in that way, we're going through muddy territory because God doesn't think ill thoughts. God doesn't judge. Doesn't, God doesn't, you know, think doom and gloom. He only sees opportunity and growth and healing. And he wants you to think that same way too. I want to bring into awareness too that I wish someone would have told me that, you know, the goal is not to be connected to Christ consciousness all day, every day, perfect patty, love and light. And the reason why you don't have to be that way, it is because you are fluid. God is fluid, therefore you are fluid. So you're not just like this, you're not a tree. You're the ocean, you're the wind, you're the fire, you're the earth, you're the seasons, you're the rain, right? You are meant to flow. And so, for example, we can start our day in Christ consciousness, connecting to our breath, and to the light of love and setting our intentions and prayers and mindset. And then we can go to the go to the gas pump and negative Nancy just throws us out of alignment. Right? And what plant medicine has taught me personally is that, you know, darkness will teach you things that love never will. So it's in those places of dissonance and misalignment and darkness. That's where our true wisdom comes from. Especially when you get older. And I'm speaking from experience. I'm, I'm almost pushing 40. <laughs> um, so it's important that we adopt the mindset of being crisis students and learning from this dissonance and learning from this darkness and learning from this misalignment. Hmm, okay. I notice that I'm allowing someone else to throw me off my juju or I see how I'm judging this person or I can see that I'm lacking boundaries in this area. I love and I forgive myself and I'm going to reconnect to my God that is stored and housed within me. God, angels, and ascendant masters, please tell me how to navigate through this. What's the lesson here? You write it down, you listen to it, you pull some cards, you do your practice, whatever that looks like. 
and that brings you back into alignment into Christ like consciousness into a Christ like mindset I am healthy I am whole I am beautiful I am bold right so where we're picking up at we're staying in the ego we're staying in that ego mindset doom and gloom and fear and victim mentality well, let's not forget that and today's the day to snap out of it and and to be reminded that you have control over your mind and recognizing that damn my mind has control over me and now that it's brought into my awareness how may I shift that and so we begin by being honest with ourselves we then take responsibility for what we're thinking because no one's putting a gun to our head especially starting from this moment and then we start holding ourselves accountable in a loving and gentle way this is how we crack the code this is how we heal our ancestors this is how we create a new energetic signature for our future bloodlines. And this is how we start creating the world that we want to live in right now, especially for our children when after we're long and gone. We have to bring awareness to what we're thinking. All of it. What am I thinking right now? And is this, are these thoughts serving me? No, they're not serving me, okay? Where do these thoughts come from? Are they mine? Let's explore that a little bit. And then the next step is I'm going to forgive myself. I am sorry, please forgive me. I love you I thank you and this is towards yourself this is freedom for you and if you want the meditation practice after once you get to this step the forgiveness if you want the forgiveness meditation I created one for you I'm just not going to give it to you you have to ask for it because that's telling me I'm serious that's letting me know that you're serious let me know and I'll give it to you Once we have forgiven ourselves, then the next step is connecting ourselves to Christ's consciousness mindset. So what is God thinking about me? Okay, what do I want to think about me? Uh, we can begin by taking the thoughts that we did have and then transmuting them into supporting thoughts. So for example, my bank account is always at negative zero and I'm so freaking sick and tired of it and I'm just so broke and lazy. How can we transmute that? Even though I see that my bank account is at this rate, I trust and believe that Positive finances are on their way to me right now. I am beautiful. I am bold. I am wealthy. And everything's going to work out for me. I trust and I believe that. That's just an example, right? Um, and I'll be sure to post some journal prompts to help you in this area somewhere. So I want to let you know how powerful your thoughts are. I want to ask you a question. What thoughts were you thinking to be in this moment right now? What were you thinking? Man, I got to change my life. 
man, I'm tired of feeling sick and tired. Man, I need a miracle. And then it's no coincidence that we're here sharing this space digitally and then physically one day. And that is why, and that is because you manifested it. You thought about it and it came about. You thought about it and it was created. And so if you have that much power to create this, just imagine when you start feeding your mind with positive thinking. There's something that's on the tip of my brain that I want to close this with. And what's coming through right now is that your mind is a powerful thing. Besides your mind or besides your heart and your womb space, your mind is one of the most powerful things things and so I'm asking you to start taking responsibility for your mindset and creating thoughts that takes you to your healing or takes you to wherever you're trying to get to and then just surround yourself with affirmations surround yourself with good, thoughtful social media, thoughtful music, thoughtful TV, because your mind is a very, it's very susceptible. It takes in a lot of things, which creates your thinking pattern. So be mindful of what you're taking in, because those things do dictate your thoughts. I pray that this video this lecture has really supported you. Please let me know below what really empowered you. And, um, you know, if you want to share your homework and cheer your sisters on in this homework, this is a safe space to do so. I can't wait to see you and witness your miracles. And uh, let me know if there's anything I can do to support you.